Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited. You saw the thumbnail, you know we are talking about Dodge's new Hurricane engine that's coming out. Now I know that of course it should be called the Stellantis Hurricane engine, but to be honest, I just don't like that name. I don't think it sounds good. So I'm gonna continue to call it the Dodge Hurricane engine. So we're gonna get into a few more of the features and specifications of it, and also what it means for the future of the Hemi engine. Let's get into it. So I just wanna start this off by saying I don't really have any insider information for you guys. In fact, I'm just getting my information straight from a Motor Trend article that came out earlier today. But I do have a somewhat unique perspective on things, being as how I have been a Dodge Tech for the last 12 years, I think I can give you a little bit different perspective on some of the things that I see from this information that's in this article. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So I think most people wanna know, is this truly the end for the Hemi engine? I think probably so. In the short term, especially, we might see a little bit more of them. I'm not sure of their exact plans, how many more model years they're going to run with a regular Hemi. I know the Hellcat is going away in its current version. I think they wanna bring it back as a full electric, something like that. But the Hemi engine as a whole will likely go away somewhat soon. And this isn't a shock to any of us. If you've been paying attention to the automotive market at any point in the last decade, it's been clear where things have been heading for quite some time. And I'm not talking about just fully electric vehicles here. Honestly, we've been living in the golden age for horsepower and muscle cars for the last 15 years. I'm telling you, in 30 years from now, we will look back and say, this was the all time greatest decade for muscle cars ever. And any rational person would understand that that just could not continue past a certain point. It's been an amazing ride. It's been, we've had some just incredible vehicles, but we had to know that it had to come to an end and we are seeing that shift happen. Now, a lot of people think that, hey, we're gonna go fully electric here within the next few years. That is just not feasible for that to happen. Too many things economy-wise, I mean, that's a whole entire video on its own, but that shift can't happen that quickly. In fact, in this Motor Trend article, it talks about Dodge saying that in 2030, they wanna have half of their vehicles be electric vehicles. Okay, so that's eight years from now, and you're still talking only half of their vehicles. That means another 50% are still powered by your standard internal combustion engines. So with that being the case, they need to come up with some new design, something that's a little bit more fuel efficient, but still has that horsepower that Dodge has really been known for all these years. That's where this hurricane really comes into play. So let's dive into a little bit more of the specifics on that particular engine. Let me ask you guys a question. When you think about a three liter inline six twin turbo engine, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, if it's not a Mark IV Super with a 2JZ engine, get up out of here. I don't know who you are because honestly, it is such an iconic engine and its tails are legendary as far as what sort of power it can make, everything like that. So like I said, it's been an icon in the industry for a long time. I do not think that this was an accident that Stellantis decided to make their inline six a three liter twin turbo as well. I think there was absolutely some marketing involved there because again, Dodge is known for their horsepower, right? That's something they really bring to the game. So they don't wanna lose that identity even if they're trying to move towards a more fuel efficient engine. So in this case, if they're making a three liter twin turbo inline six, that can maybe make that correlation in people's minds between this engine and the 2JZ engine. They're thinking, oh man, this thing can make all sorts of power too. And make power it does. There's actually two different horsepower trim levels. There's a base model and a more upscale model. Both of them make terrific horsepower. Now the standard output Hurricane says it will offer more than 400 horsepower and more than 450 foot-pounds of torque. Now, interestingly, this is at a max of 5,800 RPM. So it's not spinning it up all that high. Now the high output variant will offer more than 500 horsepower and more than 475 foot-pounds of torque at up to 6,100 RPM in their initial configurations. So obviously those numbers are very, very impressive. And you might think to yourself, well, why is it making that power figure so low in the RPM band? We know that an inline six engine can rev. Why did they bring it down so much? Well, I'll tell you why, because their customers are very much used to engines like this. You got a big V8 under the hood. It's got a lot of torque, a lot of grunt down low. And what happens is when you have that turbocharged engine, you have to size those turbos correctly so that power comes on immediately and you get that same thrust, that same initial feel of power down low. Now the problem is, is the trade-off with that is that it tends to taper off quite sharply up at the top end of the RPM range. That being the case, you have these red lines that are fairly low, you know, 5,800 RPM, 6,100 RPM, but man, they are going to feel absolutely meaty down low. And how do I know this to be the case? 
Well, the Jeep Wrangler now has offered a two liter turbo for the last few years here. And if you've ever gotten a chance to drive one of those Wranglers, they feel much, much bigger than a two liter engine. That turbo is sized very small for the engine, so the power comes in very early and very hard, and it's got a lot of punch down low. They're really fun to drive, actually. So it's the same concept with this three liter. They're just sizing these turbos down a little bit to give themselves a lot more oomph. Now, the article does mention that these torque figures Let's see here. It says that they will maintain at least 90% of peak torque from 2,350 RPM all the way to redline. Now that's exactly what I'm talking about here. They've sized these turbos down so that they got that meat of the power band and they feel very, very punchy off the line. Now again, you've got that loss up top, but in a big car like this, you're not really used to revving them out anyway. So I just think it's a smart way to go. All right, let's go over just a few more of the specifications that this article lists for the Hurricane engine. So it's a dual overhead cam design with direct injection and individual cooling systems for the turbos that are separate from the engine cooling circuit. So there's some unique features there. Now the next thing I'm gonna list here is something I wanna read directly from the article because I don't wanna mess it up. It sounds like something that's completely made up, but it's apparently a new technology that they've really developed. It's called plasma transfer wire arc technology. And what it does, it sprays vaporized steel alloy onto each cylinder wall. And this is a strong coating with an almost perfect metal on metal bond with 10 times the wear resistance of traditional coatings that's also 50% thinner. So the cylinder lining itself is a sprayed on metal. <laughs> that's a crazy situation. Now essentially based on this article, the primary difference between the standard output and the high output is going to be different turbochargers that offer more boost overall. That's what really gives you that overall higher power figure. I'm sure there'll be a couple other minor changes, but those are the major ones. Now something else I feel like is a very interesting feature of these engines is that very much like the Pentastar V6, the exhaust manifold is actually cast into the head itself. So the turbos just bolt directly to the head. Now this has both positives and negatives. The positives are that you have water jackets running through there that can keep those temps down and keep those turbo intake temps down as well, which really helps with your efficiency. The downside is that it's not so great for modification because now you can't change out a turbo header with a different style one, change your turbo placement. You could potentially link the two together and put a big single on there, but I just don't think it's going to be as neat or as tidy as maybe, or as even as fun as some of the old style engines are where you could just swap out manifolds at will. The nice feature of this engine is that it has that air to water intercooler built right into it there on the passenger side. Obviously one more thing that's going to make it very efficient and very power producing for its size. So those are some of the details of the engine itself. Let's go over some of the positives and negatives of this engine as I see it from a technician standpoint. Let's hit the positives first. Now, in my opinion, this is going to be an exceptionally well-engineered engine. I really like some of this stuff, the new stuff that they're doing these days, that two liter turbo. This, this might even be a variation on that two liter turbo itself that's in the Wrangler. I think there's some interesting stuff happening there and I think it's a decent engine. It drives very, very nicely. So I think you can expect the same out of this engine. It is not in any league whatsoever with my feelings about a three low eco diesel engine, which I absolutely cannot stand. I think these are going to be great engines. I also think they're going to be really, really fun to drive. I think uh, Chrysler, Dodge, Stellantis, whatever you want to call them, I think they totally understand that concept and they get who their core customers are that feeling that they have when they get in these vehicles, they wanna give them that same feel. I think this engine's going to do that for them. Now, another positive of these engines is that they are going to be more fuel efficient than your old Hemi engines were. Obviously, that is the way that the entire world is heading. I've been seeing it from as long as 20 years ago that that was the way it was eventually going to have to go. Small displacement engines with turbochargers on them. Europe's been doing it for absolutely forever. We just didn't want to let go over here of our massive V8 engines, but the time is here and that's what we're going to have to do. But I still think we can get some great power out of these engines and still have a lot of fun driving them. So let's go over some of the cons here. One of the primary cons that I see is that being that it's a brand new platform, it's going to take a while for manufacturers to come out with aftermarket parts for them. Now, generally you'll see that within the first year or so, they'll come out with some basic stuff like a new intake for it, some exhaust components, things like that. But the more complicated engine stuff and the more serious upgrades, I think are going to take a little bit longer. Now, that being said, 
if you can just bolt different turbochargers to that cylinder head, you can bet that within six months, they're gonna have a lot of different options out there for upgrading the turbos. Now, the real question is, what is the engine itself made of? How much power can that bottom end handle before that thing goes kablooey? That's what I think most of us are excited about. We wanna see what this engine's really capable of. Now this next negative is one of those things that's just simply inevitable. Now one of the reasons I really like the Hemi platform is because it's so easy to show you guys how to work on these things. The Hemi engine is actually a very, very simple engine. It's based on very simple engine mechanics. So it's something that I can show you guys very simply how to do different things and you can feel confident about attacking them yourself. Now a new engine like this Hurricane engine, that's not going to be the case. These are very, very complex engines. There's a lot happening there. Very, there's a lot of stuff packed into a very small area. Now, one of the things that lets you know that is because it is a direct injected vehicle. There's a lot of extra components that come along with that. And also, as I mentioned, you have a separate cooling system for the turbochargers than you do for the primary engine. That means there's multiple cooling systems happening within the engine bay. So there's gonna be hoses and lines running absolutely everywhere. There's more sensors on these engines than there ever were before. So there's more wiring than there ever was before. All of this can be very, very intimidating and I think make it harder for people to jump in and say, I can modify this thing. I like the Hemi engine because you feel like I can tackle this, I can do this. These new engines, they're a little scary, they're a little intimidating and people don't wanna dive in. I would like to say that an engine is an engine is an engine. Once you work, learn how to work on one, you can kind of figure out the same concepts work generally for most all of them. Rotaries, they're their own thing. I'm not even talking about rotaries here, but I think that as one drawback of the newer engine is that they are very much more complex and it scares a lot of people away from modifying them. Now, on that same thread, another negative here is that the factories intentionally make these vehicles complex. And one of the th reasons why they do that is because they don't want you messing with them. They want you to leave them perfectly stock because that's the way they work the best. That's the way they're designed. They're not really huge fans of the whole modification thing. They don't want you messing with their great little product that they've come up with. So they find ways to make that happen. Now on the two liter turbo that I've been talking about with the Wrangler specifically, there are things that are actually cast into the engine block and the cylinder head that make it to where you can't delete those components even if you wanted to because they are integral to the engine. They are no longer just bolted onto the side. No, it's cast into it so you can't physically remove it. And I think you guys can get exactly what I'm talking about here. I think this new three liter Hurricane engine will be very much the same. I think there's gonna be some components on there that maybe you would like to remove, but it's just not physically possible because they have actually built it into the engine itself. Now that's not to say that these are all bad things because they're not, and I think they are very helpful, but I do think it will be a limiting factor in aftermarket companies producing products quickly enough to really make some great power out of these things. Now. Dodge being who they are, you know that they're gonna make some pretty good horsepower with these things at some point, but the question is how quickly will that happen? Now I know all of us, we love the rumble of the V8 engine. That's something that just draws us to it. You want that sound of a V8 at full song. It just, oh, it's a special noise, isn't it? But maybe unpopular opinion here, but I would say for me personally, that a three liter inline six at full song that's gotta be, I mean, it's, it's right there. That, that's just a beautiful sounding engine. So I, like I said, I cannot say how excited I am that they did not go with some weird V6 variant here. The fact that they went with the inline six, I could not be more happy about that. So the very last negative that I'm thinking about here, it's not that big of a deal, but I am a little bit disappointed that the engine is direct injected because while it is fantastic for emissions reasons, it does make it a little bit more difficult to modify for performance reasons. Although I am not surprised at all because the two liter turbo in the Wrangler is also direct injected. And you know what? <laughs> just thinking about it right now, I'm pretty sure that this engine is probably just another two cylinders grafted onto the back of that two liter engine to make it a three liter inline six. That would make a lot of sense as far as how they designed this thing. Now I know people are upset and concerned and thinking that the Hemi is going to go away, but first of all, I still think they're gonna keep the Hemi around for at least a little while longer. And second of all, they have produced quite a few Hemi engines, wouldn't you agree? I think there's quite a lot of them out there. 
the Hemi is not going anywhere anytime soon. People are going to be modifying these things for many years to come. If you think about it, people are still modifying flathead Ford V8s, and those are, what, 80 years old now? So the Hemi engine is going to be around for a long time. They made a lot of those things. They're not going anywhere. Don't worry about that. Yes, you might not be able to buy a brand new one within a few years, but it's not really that big a deal. We can still have fun with our Hemi engines. We can still modify our Hemi engines and we can do whatever we want to them because that's the best part about it. Now, I've not been to any sort of technical training class on this engine just yet. I suspect that's going to come a little bit down the line, maybe three, four months from now. Oddly enough, technicians are one of the last to get fresh information about a new power plant. Always the sales department gets all that information first, and I have no idea what they do with it. But when it finally trickles down to us, they give us a class. We'll go take a look at this thing. I can almost guarantee it's going to be a live class where I have to go there in person, tear this engine down, put it all back together again. I gotta tell you, I'm very excited about that. I can't wait to put my hands on one of these things. I can't wait to drive one of these things. I'm not concerned about this at all. I consider this an absolute win versus what the alternatives were. I think this is awesome, guys, and I hope you will embrace it as well. All right, as soon as I have more information about this engine, if I do go to a class, I'll definitely be posting an update video on that. But for right now, we'll see you next time on Reignited.